welcome to the Group Home Riches Podcast. If you have the desire to be your own boss, create your own schedule, and become financially free while at the same time helping people in need, then you've come to the right place. At GroupHomeRiches.com, we teach people exactly like yourself how to get started in the group home business. And on this podcast, you're going to hear their stories firsthand. We have one of our, I would say probably one of the more active members on our private Facebook group, Johnny. I know that's your name on there. Johnny, what do you go by for the people out there? John, or my name is John Denham, but you can call me John. All right. And you're located in Detroit. You just recently got your first group home up and running. Is it filled? Yes. Yeah, so at Phil Capacity, he's always in the Facebook group, you know, telling stories. Definitely one of the more helpful members in there. So thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me, Brandon. So before we kind of get into the nitty gritty details of like the group home business, why don't we just kind of backtrack and give everybody just a little bit about your background. You know, what, what were you doing before you found us and what made you even look up how to start a group home on the internet? Why did you find us in the first place? Well, I'm a former nurse. I became a nurse in 1992 and so I've, I've seen and done a lot of things in that area. And I kind of just, in the back of my mind, I thought a group home or a, uh, some kind of care home would kind of complement what I know and what I do. So like I said, it's been in the back of my mind for some years. And then just one day I looked it up, how to start a group home. And you guys popped up and I, you know, I read all the information and it probably took a few months and then i finally reached out to you at the time i happened to be i was doing over the road trucking so i called you from my truck on a break That's right and we talked for a minute and you kind of explained to me what the group was about and what the course was about and i said that's what i need i think i even remember telling you i wasn't really looking for you know the internet stuff i just I wanted someone who was going to show me or tell me how to do it. And you said, that's us. I said, let's do it. (laughs) Awesome. So you you signed up for the gold course, but I think you're more the type of person to like want to get out there and start taking action and learn as you go along. It kind of sounded like, right? Yeah. So I, I probably went through the course. I'm one of those people that I'll sit down. I'll go through the whole thing in one day. Nice. So I went through all that stuff and I was like, I can do this. <laughs> so I just started looking for a house and that probably was the most uh, difficult part, finding a house. I think I talked to you when it was probably winter and I didn't find a house until um, July. But I was out there every day. I called real estate agents. agents. I called um for sale by owners. I stopped by houses that had the signs in front. I pretty much was looking every day. I, I kind of believe that once a person puts their mind to something, if you keep doing something towards it, it'll come or it'll happen. But if you don't do anything, it'll never happen. So that's how I look at it. 100%. Now, is that have you always had that mindset or did you develop it on your own or? or- have you learned that through like education no that, that's, books and that's, stuff like that that's pretty much how i, I run my life i'm Beautiful. just i'll just go for it i'm that person that'll jump yeah <laughs> everybody else is watching me yeah awesome so let's kind of re- rewind a little bit you touched on a key point so you mentioned that kind of the biggest struggle in the beginning the biggest challenge was you know just finding a property right, right, right. which for the people listening out there, if you already have a property or, you know, if you just have the means to just go and purchase a property, you know, that's pretty simple, right? There's the, but a lot of folks that we work with, you know, when just starting out a business, a lot of people are looking to start a business because they're, you know, they might be on a tight budget. They might be check to check. You know, you don't really have the means to just go purchase a house cash or put 20% down for a housing payment. So a lot of our members need to either get started by leasing a property or we have a lot of folks that start by partnering 
with landlords, but that's another step to the process, right? And it can be challenging. So let's talk a little bit about that. So you, you eventually did find the property. Take us through that. What's that like? Are you, are you leasing a property or did, did you need to partner with somebody? So I'm leasing a property and I did consider partnering and some of the conversations I've had with different landlords or different partners, it just would not have worked out for me. I've done the partner thing before and it just it's something I want to do. So in my quest, I've seen some people post where they, they're looking on Craigslist and which to me is not a good thing because there's a lot of scammers on Craigslist. So I was looking for a landlord who understood what I was trying to do. So I went to Craigslist and I ran into a lot of scammers. I would go look at these beautiful properties and the person would tell me to send $75 because they're out of town and they would send me the key by mail overnight, yada, yada, yada. So it was a, it was a bunch of stuff. And But I kept looking, kept looking. I actually had a real estate agent looking for a property for me. I, I had made up my mind that I was going to lease I lease a property. I didn't want to buy or try to do a land contract or anything at the time, because to me, leasing just made the most sense, especially getting just getting started. So I had a real estate agent, two real estate agents looking for a property for me. And I realized that those real estate agents had no clue of what I was talking about. Yep. So I, one of the ladies, she would tell me every other day, I found a property. I'm going to talk to the landlord and see if he, he'll, she kept using the word sub, let you sublease or sublet. Yep. See if he'll let you that's, sublet. that's the technical legal term for what you're going to be doing with your, exactly. with your tenants. And every time she would come back to me every other day and say, he said no, or he's not interested. I'm like, so what are you, what are you asking him? And when she told me what she was asking, I, I, realized in her voice that she didn't believe in what I was doing. Yep. I was like, oh, okay. So I kind of <laughs> left her alone. I actually went on a, a Facebook real estate group that's in my city. And I told them what I was looking for. And a lady reached out to me immediately who was a real estate agent. She says, I can help you. And I said, okay, give me your number. I called her immediately. She said, I have two properties right now that you can look at today. And I was like, really? Let's go. So she showed me in conversation with her, she understood exactly what I was looking for. And I was like, this is so refreshing to have this conversation. She knows what I want. So she showed me one property, which was an apartment building, a four family apartment building. And it was under construction. It had to be rehab. And I, I was kind of in a hurry. I said, show me the other one. She took me over to the other one. The lady that owned it met us there. And this lady, she lives, well, Detroit is like the big city. And then we have uh, surrounding cities or suburbs. This lady lived maybe 40 miles from the city. And she did not look comfortable there at all. And she said, if you want it, you can have it today. And I said, I will take it. She gave Beautiful. me a price. I counted her price. And she said, okay, we get the paperwork the next day and it was done. Beautiful. So you, you found the profile that we kind of say in, in the real estate biz, you found a motivated landlord. Correct. So, so there was with, with that landlord, there wasn't really a lot of back and forth. That doesn't sound like, did she have any questions about what you were doing or she just wanted to get that property off her hands? She was out of there. I, I, I haven't seen her since I talked to her once. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's what you want to be looking for out there. You know, exactly. that's, uh, that's what we would call in, in sales. That's a lay down sale, right? Yeah. It's someone that's just ready to, you know, they don't, they don't care. They're, they're just ready to sell or buy or, you know, rent in this case, it was just rent, renting out the property. Right. So it took a, you a long time to find that, but you, you got it. <laughs> so yeah. I think the important part there is I, kept doing something every day. Yeah. I would have never run into this real estate agent had I not been looking. Yep. And 
big lesson learned and and for for the folks out there what we recommend we recommend going directly to try to find the the landlords or the homeowners directly right when you're working with agents you know a lot of them they don't have the gold course they haven't been studying this right, they right. don't they don't understand what you're doing you can tell them but remember that that old game you know the the telephone game right when the you're just you're passing on a message to them. You don't know if they understand right, it right. or if they believe in it. And yeah. then they're they're talking to landlords that are going to be skeptical at first if they're not pitching it correctly. Right. So luckily, John found a real estate agent that that just got it. So she it sounded like maybe she had a little bit of knowledge about the business model at first or already. Yep, she like, did. She knew exactly okay. what I was talking about. Yeah, so if she gets it and she can pitch it correctly, that's great. Um, another thing, just time saver out there, Craigslist can be a great place to find landlords. But it's almost it's almost an art to get through all the scams, though. <laughs> so exactly. you want to look look out for. I used to do this with uh, when I was wholesaling houses. I would spend a lot of time on Craigslist looking for just legit homeowners. <laughs> which on Craigslist, when you, there's a property for sale or an apartment, you know, for lease, right. it's a small percentage <laughs> the, of, you, of like, right. you know, direct homeowners, but yeah. you can tell maybe for the next property, John, but you can usually tell you, you want to look for a local phone number, Okay. You, no corporate numbers, no extensions, nothing like that. And you look out for like a sales copy, you know, if, if the copy sounds like super professional and like, you know, fish eyed, like professional photographs of the house. Right. Not saying that that's a scam, but you're most likely going to be talking to a middleman, you know, like yep, a, a, a management company, yep, property manager, apartment locator, or, you know, as, as you ran into some of them are scams, right, <laughs> so, right, exactly. but you got the property. So while you were looking for the property, had you been doing like marketing before that, or did you get the property lined up and then start marketing to find your tenants? So by the time I had got the house, oh, let me throw this in there. Yeah. The, the landlord paid the real estate agent for her. Right. So okay. Somebody that's wondering who has to pay the real estate agent, the, the owner paid them. That's how that works in Texas too, is if you're like a buyer, or um, looking for a place to rent, right. typically the agent is paid, you know, from the seller or from, you know, the, right. the landlord. So cool. if you can find somebody like John did, that's that's amazing. Like an agent that, that gets it, uh, it's basically like a free service for you. Yep. That, was, that was beautiful. Anyway, I was telling you, I had my, I set up a website, I, had brochures made and I had flyers made before I got the house. So my, on those um, marketing materials, the house address is not there. My office address is there. Okay. Office address and office phone number. So I was pretty much marketing to case managers and social workers. I'm not, I wasn't marketing to you know individuals on the street. Beautiful. So had you gotten like calls and leads before you got the property? Uh, yes. Uh, so and most of those were from uh, case managers. So that's what we recommend folks doing in the beginning is it's kind of counterintuitive. You know, yeah. as you as you mentioned, you didn't have the property. You didn't even have the address on it. If you listen to our sales calls on like uh, on YouTube or in the course, you know, you'll see, you know, the property is never talked about, to be honest. So you can do that in the beginning on our, our websites. You know, we don't have the address. Andy just uses one website for, um, you know, multiple right, properties. Right. right? So I, th I think a lot of the people in the group misunderstand that when we say start marketing before you get your house, to me, it just makes more sense to market to the people who are going to refer clients to you and 100%. Not have the client in mind. Yep, and that's what we mean by marketing. That's who we market to and who we right. we recommend to. And there, there's also, and I think you, you get a lot of leads through like Facebook and stuff from directly from tenants too, right? 
Yep, yeah, man. I put an ad on Facebook Marketplace. I kind of tweaked it over the months, but now yeah. I think I have it perfectly. And I can say I probably get 25 to 30 inquiries per day. <laughs> oh, man. Per uh, day. It's all day, every day. Have you posted the ad that you use in the Facebook group? Yes. Every, I think everybody's seen it. Cool. I got to check that out. I might have missed it. There, yeah, that's kind of how our website is performs like that. We probably get about 10 to 15 leads. But when you are marketing to the general public, yes, you know, just affordable housing is in huge demand, which you, you see, right? Like right, your right. phone's blowing off the hook. Yeah. But you do kind of want to, we want to filter those people out. You know, we want people that are kind of looking for a transitional type of space to live that are going to follow our, our house rules. And, you know, that's not the type of housing we provide is not really like, you know, it's not the typical apartment living. So right, right. you definitely, you got to kind of got to weed out the people that are just looking for a cheap apartment because, you know, they, they can't afford it or, right, or whatever right. reasons right. there are. But I'm sure you've learned that, right? And you have probably have found some tenants through that process as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think most of the people that are there now, if I think correctly, I think the people that are there now come from Facebook. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. And then with your caseworkers and social workers, they're probably like having their clients reach out to you as well. Right. Oh, I do have one there that comes from this lady's title is, but she helps re-enter people that just got out of prison. Okay. Very cool. There's a number of different populations and demographics that you can market to out there. Right. Is your property, you, you just kind of keep it general, like just general, affordable, cooperative living? Yep. Or do you yep. market for a specific niche? Nope, it's just, I call it general population. And this lady found me on from my website also. Very cool. And then once you scale, which we'll, you know, we'll be helping you out with that. Right. Once you have a couple of properties, then you can, you kind of house each demographic in each house. So you, you will have like a specific, you know, if you get a, a lead for a veteran, all right, great. I have a veteran's house over on, you know, over on main street. Okay. Yeah. So just to kind of recap, let's to take it back to the marketing. We do recommend you do the marketing first, even though it's counterintuitive. If anything, I think it's good to do that. So when you do have the property, you're going to know who at least who to call or you might have some people on the waiting list so you don't have to, you know, you don't have to wait. But I also think it's kind of like a mental thing, right? When your phone was starting, you were starting to get calls. Did you feel a little bit more confident about going to get the property and, you know, taking on a new housing payment? Yeah, that was a little concern. Um, how am I going to fill the house up? But my other concern was when they started calling, I better hurry up and get a house. Yep. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, it's like proof of concept. And yeah, so there's a little anxiety there. Yeah. And, you know, everybody's risk tolerance is a little bit different. Yeah. So I recommend people, you know, just do your marketing, do your networking until you do feel confident enough to go get the property. Right, right. There's nothing wrong with reaching out to caseworkers and just letting them know, hey, this is what I plan on doing. I'm looking for a location. You know, are you looking for landlords to work with? There's nothing wrong with that. Yep. Oh. I was pretty much telling them. I told them where I was calling from, and I'm opening up a group home called the Independent Living Home in Detroit, and wondering if uh, there is some way that I can be of service to you. I love that frame, yep. that the frame of mind, not like asking them, "Hey, can you send me leads?" But right, hey, what exactly. what can I do for you? Yep. So excellent. So remind me again, when did you get the property? It was a couple months ago, right? It was July. I started July 1st. Okay. And from the time, you know, you got your lease, then how long did it take for you to start getting tenants in there? Okay. So that's a, a little story. Um, the lady that the landlord, she had three people living there already and none of those were paying rent. Ooh, okay. So I had to get those guys out of there. I tell some of the people in the group I did it the Detroit way. <laughs> I don't know the specifics of that, but I think I know what you're talking about. Well, they were out within the next, uh, they were out within, they were out quickly. Yeah. 
I think, if I remember correctly, during that time, I got two residents of my own. And once I got them out, I kind of cleaned the place up and it was gangbusters from there. So that's a huge point that I didn't know. So this is another reason, you know, think, put yourself in the shoes of, again, same frame of mind that John used to get his, you know, when he was marketing, kind of the same frame of mind with that landlord. You know, think of, yes, you got a property, she allowed you to sublease, but, you know, think of the value that you brought to that situation. Okay. You solved a massive problem for that landlord. Yeah, she's getting good rent and I do all the maintenance and I'm kind of OCD, so I don't like, you know, little things sticking out or uh, water dripping, that sort of thing. So I fix everything. So she, you know, she lucked out. Yeah, <laughs> you know, think, of, exactly. think of this landlord's current tenant, which is John, compared to the previous tenants that this woman had. Yeah, the, the so guy, one of the guys was selling drugs out of the house. That's how bad it was. So that's the type of people that I look for when I'm doing, you know, real estate investing. They are the people that if you can solve their problems like John did, you can get, you know, great deals or bare minimum, you know, of course, it's a no brainer for her to work with somebody like John. Right. But this is another kind of thing that you can think about when you are scaling and when you're in the position to, you know, purchase the property. Those are the types of people that you get great deals from. And there's a couple of different options. Like if you have squatters in there, you can always use scary letters. You can go the Detroit way. <laughs> <laughs> and we would always offer, hey, cash for keys. If all else failed, you know, you basically just bribe them to get out of there, <laughs> which can save you time and, and everything like that. So you got the property back in July or in, in the summer. And then you had, to, how long did it take for you to like get the tenants out of there and get the place cleaned up? So they, those three guys were out. Well, one of them left immediately. The other two guys, the one that was selling drugs, I, I put up cameras all over the house and he was out within a week. And then the other guy was just a bum. And that got really interesting. <laughs> but I would say within uh, that first month, they were gone. And I, I had people waiting to get in there. I guess they had to kind of clean it up and it was, you know, smelly and it, it had to be cleaned up. But while they were there, I was showing the house to other people. Cool. So it was kind of like, as soon as you got the place cleaned up and ready, then you were, you were able to start putting people in the beds. Yep, exactly. Beautiful. So, and now fast forward, how many bedrooms is it? There's eight bedrooms in this house. Wow. Yep. That, um, that's... It's in a three bedroom neighborhood, but I guess some time ago, someone added an addition, added an addition onto the house. So there's five bedrooms upstairs and three downstairs. So that would be what we would call a cash cow. So yeah, just exactly. simple math. I'm guessing you're, are you charging by the room or by the bed? By the room. By the room. So it, it's a, uh, so single room occupancies, but John has eight bedrooms to work with. So <laughs> <laughs> with this business, when you're charging by the bed, which we typically do, you know, like a roommate situation. Right. Or when you're charging by the room, obviously, you know, you're going to be able to, you know, the more bedrooms you have, the more beds, the more revenue. Right. And I bet you, like for the the market rent, you know, is that property that you're renting, is there a big difference in price between, say, your property compared to like other, you know, four bedroom or five bedrooms in the neighborhood? Uh, you mean as far as the market? No, it's not not a big difference. So that's a really key concept to think about when you're in, in the beginning stages. If you can find a property like this, you know, you found like the perfect property, right? right? Yeah. You know, you were, you were able to solve the problem in eight bedroom, which yeah. is probably unheard of in that neighborhood. Exactly. So the landlord, she's got eight bedrooms, but it's not like she can charge a lot more for that, you know, compared to a traditional renter. Right. So in real estate, when you're looking to lease a property or purchase a property, you know, there's not a big difference in price between like a three, four, five bedroom or, in, you know, the rare gems that have, you know, eight bedrooms. 
Right. Not a big difference in purchase price. Huge difference for your bottom line, though, when you're running right. a group home. Right. That's the so, other thing. If I were to try to buy that property, even though it has eight bedrooms, it still has to appraise at you know what's going on in the neighborhood. Yeah. So, so you're going to be buying it for the same price as like one of the four bedrooms. Are you right, said exactly. there's yep. mainly three bedrooms. Yep. Yep. Beautiful. So we got the first property rocking and rolling. Took you a couple months, a couple bumps along the way, but you figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are the future plans? You know, what are your goals? Are are you doing this full time now? Yep. This is becoming more and more full time. I'm trying to stop what I'm doing, uh, which is driving, and do this more. So this one house is like the the start to my my end yeah and you probably for these i'm good so that was i think you answered my next question but i cut you off what did what did you say if i can do two more of these i can quit working okay i want people to think about that out there <laughs> and even with with three of those would that still be that would still you could probably do that with part-time energy right yeah exactly yeah that's i go over to the house maybe I can say twice a week and one of them is just to put the trash out because the guys they won't do it for some reason okay so they put the trash out and then I ask them to put the cans back and then every now and then um just to check make sure it's clean and everything but I don't have to do anything really everything's done yeah and then we'll we'll show you other ways to kind of solidify that you know to kind of make it almost passive for you. You know, no business is ever passive. Right, but, right. You know, Andy's got it set up to where he he only spends like an hour or two per month on the business. Oh, so that would be beautiful. Yep, we, we want to get you there. Yep. <laughs> so is that the final goal is to just get a couple of these things and kind of just focus on, on this kind of part-time? But it sounds like on three of them, you're going to be either making or surpassing what you bring in with your full-time job, right? Correct, correct. I would like to make this a major cash flow. That's probably some of the things that you and I will talk about as far as yeah. how to go to the next level with this. 100%. It's, you kind of seeing it now, you know, yeah. picture it from a real estate point of view. Right, right. You have your landlord that's, she's, you know, getting the cash flow that she wanted, right? right. She owns the property build an equity in the property, has those tax advantages, she's probably getting a little bit of cash flow from, right. you know, her rental price to you. Right. But then on top of that, you have probably pretty decent part-time income coming in now. Yep. So eventually we think you almost want to be in like the landlord's position as well. So building up the equity in the properties, right? your mortgage or, you know, your private money loans that you're paying is going to be less than like the lease right you see that was, um, that was my original plan i'm i'm a real estate guy nice i'm a, I'm a guy so i want properties that's cash flowing that's yeah this solves the cash flow problem that a lot of landlords have yeah you know the woman you're renting from you know she lost money last year Right? right. And she had to deal with all those headaches. Yeah. But this is a way to basically compare to your typical kind of rental property model. This is a way to basically 10 X the cash flow. Yeah. And you still can benefit from all those other advantages of, of investing in real estate. Yeah. So we'll kind of go through everything. We'll kind of come up with a plan for you, show you how to get there, but you got the hardest part done. <laughs> now yeah. it's just about kind of, washing, rinsing, and repeating. And we'll show you a couple tweaks that you can do. And as usual, I'm sure you'll be keeping people posted in that Facebook group. Yeah, I, I tell them everything that happens yeah. day, day by day. So that's another huge advantage of the Gold Course is, you know, our Gold Course members have access to a, a, one of our private Facebook group. Right. And people in there helping each other out, sharing marketing material, sharing tips. There's a couple really active members like Johnny in there that, you know, you can basically kind of follow along with their business, right? And just yep. learn from them. <laughs> so Johnny, where can people, if, if they want to reach out to you or, you know, learn more about, about you, where can people find you? So I'm in the group. And then if 
you can always instant message me or private message me. I'm Johnny Trump on Facebook. I don't know how long that's going to be the same, but people have been uh, getting on my case about changing my name. But I'm Johnny Trump on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> yeah, and if you do end up signing up for the gold course, you know, just find us on Facebook uh, under Group Home Riches. Request to join that group, and you'll you'll see Johnny in there. He's yep. he's usually pretty active. So, Johnny, thank you so much for telling us your story. Folks out there, again, reach out to him on Facebook if you'd like. Reach out to us if you have any questions. If you don't have the gold course yet, you know, it's a no-brainer. If you do want to get into this business, sign up for that if you can. It's only 179 bucks at the time of this recording. And you can always sign up for your free training material at grouphomeriches.com if you just want to test the waters and kind of learn the basics and see if it's going to be the right fit for you. Johnny, do you have any, any parting words for the folks out there? Yes, I do. Don't overthink this. Uh, what do they call it? Um, when you analyze too much, don't do that. Just Analysis paralysis. Paralysis. Yeah, and I'm telling you, it's going to work. I agree. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on in, and we look forward to working with you. My pleasure.